moment in Vancouver, um, a little whistle stop tour. So I started my time in the Gastown district, which is um, like a historic area in the city. Um, and what you've just seen is the famous steam powered clock. Um, was that at the wrong time to hear it chime? Apparently it makes a noise every 15 minutes. Um, and it takes, the whole thing is powered by steam and it takes 45 minutes for the, um, one of the big pendulums to drop down. Um, and that's what powers the clock. Anyway, what I'm gonna do is I'm um, gonna go from here up to Stanley Park, have a walk around Stanley Park, and then hopefully explore a little bit around the sea wall in Vancouver. So I look forward to it. Thank you for joining me. Behind me over here is the cruise ship terminal and um, maybe the convention center as well. Uh, but uh, I came up last night and all of those were lit up, all multicoloured. It's looked really cool actually. Not that I'm a fan of cruise ships, but um, that looked quite good. <laughs> like multicoloured sails. So we're gonna see how far we can get walking around by the water now. It's beautiful over there. Back in 2010, Vancouver was the host for the Winter Olympics. And this behind me, if that's a spectacular view, is where they lit the Olympic torches. So I had those burning for the whole time. It's all lit up at night too. Um, must have looked absolutely spectacular. But also really nice to see it still standing there with the mountains in the background. And this sculpture behind me is fairly iconic for Vancouver as well. I'm not sure if it's actually made of Lego or if it just looks like it is. But we'll go have a closer look. Spectacular location again. And close up, I can definitely confirm it's not made of Lego. A walk around the seawall over to there which is Stanley Park. Last time I was here I hired a bike and went for a ride around Stanley Park. Today I'm going to walk around, don't know if I'll make it around the whole perimeter, see how we go. Um, but just before as we're leaving the Orca um, I was out with a friend of mine who lives in Vancouver last night Alex and she was telling me about one day when she went out on an inflatable kayak with a friend of hers um, and they were visited by two orcas. She had some absolutely amazing videos but I think it's fair to say it was an absolutely <laughs> terrifying or inspiring experience. She was absolutely petrified but the video looks amazing so be careful if you do go kayaking around here there are orcas. denying it is a beautiful city. Beautiful. 
beautiful day for reflections in the city. And this area with the great views over the water and the rather fancy boats uh, before we get to Sandy Park is Coal Harbour. One thing that's really nice about the park is firstly there's a road running around it, um, secondly there's a very clear definition between where walkers should go, where cyclists should go, make it really easy in theory I guess for everyone to have their own space and all of them also have the same views. Is, I think it's called Brockton Park. It's the famous totem poles. These are pretty cool. So the totem poles depict a um, either real or a mystical event and each part of them represents something different. So the eagle is the lordship of the, the air, the whale, the sea, um, the wolf is the land and the frog is the transition in the link between the land and the sea. But they all tell a story. Where the totem poles are are basically the thinnest part of Stanley Park, I think. Um, so I've cut across there, which means I'm now walking along the opposite side of the seawall. So we've got the mountains in the background again, um, and between me and them is, I think that's the port. It looks pretty industrial over there. And we're headed to a viewpoint which should give us a view of that bridge. But it's got distinctly colder over this side. I don't know if you can see this lady here. She is basically Vancouver's equivalent of the Little Mermaid. Well, she kind of is. I don't know if she's a mermaid, but she is a very small woman sitting on a rock. I have to say, oh, she's called Girl in Wetsuit, sorry. Girl in Wetsuit. She's slightly less popular than <laughs> Little Mermaid from what I can see. And this 
is a replica of the SS Empress of Japan. We sailed for 31 years around here. I finished in 1922. Just reading the plaque underneath, you can tell. <laughs> So behind me over here is the Lion's Gate Bridge. I believe I'm going to be taking that tomorrow um, as I'm heading up north to go skiing up in Whistler. So um, yeah, I think that's going to be the way that I get there. Um, but before that, we're going to see what it looks like on the ground. If you've seen my videos of Montreal and Quebec and Toronto and Banff. Um, one thing that I have noticed is it is so much warmer here in Vancouver. Um, all the other cities we had snow um, falling or really really thick on the ground. Um, it's March so I think it's coming to the end of the um, well the snowy season but um, Apparently in Vancouver it only snows about three times a year maybe um, so it is distinctly warmer here although I have noticed the difference between the uh, north side of Stanley Park and the south side I think it's more about the shade than anything else um, but yeah there's snow up in the mountains I'm not sure if all of that ever goes I recall coming here once in July um, and I think there was still snow on the mountains so um, yeah interesting i was surprised when i arrived yesterday to see how people walking around in just t-shirts which i wouldn't have dared do in the minus temperatures around banff <laughs> we're taking a little detour off the seawall to go up to prospect point where i think we get a good view out over the lion's gate bridge which is literally just there so we're not far off it said it's a steep hill, so that might put a few cyclists off. So the views are spectacular here. And I can see what other people might not opt to do this little steep windy route that I found when they could walk, just walk along the seawall. Oh, little out of breath. It's interesting the things you remember when they are the only person you can see walking in a specific track. I just remembered the sign I saw by the totem poles saying coyotes denning but they do say they, just, they close the tracks um, but my friend said there have been a few attacks in the park um, so I'm glad I finally reached a proper concrete path I'm almost at Prospect Point the building here behind me has the name um, hopefully it'll be worth it when I've got good views I think also the people on the seawall could have easily got here too. <laughs> and here's the view from Prospect Point. So the people, everybody else is here, did get these great views. But they didn't get the same ones as me. continuing off piste slightly. Um, so I'm following the Prospect Point Trail and I'm a little above the seawall now. I don't know if you can see the mountains behind me. Um, there are a few people ahead of me but I feel a little bit more comfortable on the coyote down in front. <laughs> but um, yeah, I'm pretty much at the very end of the park. 
Uh, I've just checked my pedometer and I've done 13,000 steps so far. Um, and I think I'm about halfway through the day, so it's going to be a big walking day, which is great. Such a beautiful day, it's a shame to not be out walking and enjoying it. But I've just gone a bit cold again. But if you're enjoying the video, please give me a thumbs up or press the red button to subscribe or the bell to get a notification every Friday when I post a new video on Sue When Why What. Thanks ever so much for joining me and I'm really glad you're enjoying it. There are actually loads of trails around the park so I'm doing something slightly different so I've moved off the seawall just to explore inside the park a little bit more. Um, So in theory, I might be headed to Hollow Tree, um, but we'll see where the mood takes us. And just before the battery runs out, we've made it to Hollow Tree. It's pretty spectacular actually. It's a tree. So hollow tree is one of the giant red cedar trees that grows around here and it's said to be the oldest tree in Stanley Park. It's a thousand years old, which is absolutely mind blowing. Wow. Now I'm back in the woods. It's beautiful. The moss on the trees. Um, yeah, headed for Third Beach now. Um, maybe Lost Lagoon, Third Beach definitely. Just about to emerge back out onto the seawall, which is looking gorgeous. Um, there is so much to explore here in Stanley Park. It's the home to the aquarium. There's also other times of year. I've heard April and May is particularly good for the gardens, which are supposed to be spectacular. So there's um, the azaleas and the rhododendrons, I think are around April, May time. Um, and then the rose garden is also supposed to be beautiful. So one day, to explore the park is not nearly enough um, but I hope you'll agree I've tried my hardest to do it a little bit of justice but I believe this here will be third beach sorry just unhook you side isn't quite as dramatic as <laughs> the other side. There's a certain peacefulness about it. 